Okay, hello everyone and welcome back to Pioneer. Today we are still in Dolasil, outside of Edelstein platform, Edelstein. And today, before we go back in time and redo this mission, I wanted to kind of follow this guy. Right, so we are still here. And we are going after, who was it? Ethel Lewis. Now last time we were able to figure out when and how it's best to attack someone here. But what I don't know, and what I'm kind of interested in figuring out, is where this ship is going to go when it leaves the station. So, we can use this, uh, the sector map, the system map, to view the paths of all the ships in the system. Right, and we can see here how it's rotating, how they're rotating, because these ships are docked at Edelstein platform. Isn't it cool how <laughs> isn't it cool how these ships will rotate on the map? That's amazing. But I think what I want to do today is follow this guy. Where is he gonna go? Where is she gonna go? I don't know. Uh, and I want to figure it out. By what I mean, we're going to follow this fellow. We're going to follow this ship, see where it goes. It might not go anywhere. It might just launch itself outside of the system. Maybe it has a destination in mind. You know, I'm sure this is something we could figure out by looking at the code. But... I kind of want to see what happens in game. So it'll leave the station at uh, 4 in the morning, or well, 400. We should probably duck down a bit so it doesn't crash into us like last time. Approach speed, relative speed. So we're gonna want to match speeds with this. I've never actually chased something in Pioneer before, so I'm not entirely sure how how we can follow it. But I'm pretty sure if we keep our relative approach speed somewhere close to zero, we can probably follow the ship without too much problem. So now that he's out of this station, let's go ahead and take a look. Let's figure out the path. Let's see where he's going to go. He doesn't have enough thrust yet to to give us one of these uh, lines. Because these lines show the paths, the predicted paths, of all the ships in the system. Ours included. He doesn't have enough thrust yet to, well, show up. So once we get away from Edel's thing, we'll switch into, uh, we'll switch off the cruise mode. Alright, it's close, far enough. Yeah, 
if we can keep that red prograde marker on a target ship, we should be able to at least stay in the same direction as him. Okay, what about now? Oh, yeah, we have some information. That red line is our target's flight path. We really, we really <laughs> came right up on him. I'm not entirely sure if there's anything worth finding out by doing this. You know, we've left Edelstein uh, space, so we could just go ahead and shoot him down again. You know, it'd probably be easier just to stop and watch this guy move in the system map. Although I suppose I could use the practice with chasing ships down. Because I think that's how you pirate stuff. Right? You find a target to pirate, and then you uh, shoot a few lasers up its nose, and Ooh, wow, <laughs> we really got close to him there, but back to the pirating, right, you, you shoot some lasers at it, and uh, your target will dump some cargo, I think. So you've pretty much got to chase down a ship. To do that. Okay, so let's take another peek at the system map. Synced up there. Look at that. Let's simulate time a bit. Shoot. Well, we really don't do much, do we? We do kind of drift apart a bit, but we're still fairly close. All those other ships have gone zooming past. So it doesn't really take their maneuvers into account or so into account. So right some of these ships will probably land here at Liang's Rock or some of the other stations in system. <laughs> Look at that. Look at how gravity swings us around. I'm not sure if that's gravity swinging us or just uh, something funky with the game, but that's kind of interesting. I mean, it wouldn't be something funky with the game. It'd be something funky with me. 
Because I still don't have a great understanding of all of this. Hmm. Let's see. So he could possibly be moving to go to Nakano or Fortress Ross. Any other? There's Polson. He could be going to Polson. There's a colony, there's a starport on Polson. How fast are we moving? So, five kilometers, almost six kilometers a second. Compared to Liang's rock. Some of the older space games that I've played, uh, was it TIE Fighter X-Wing, I think? TIE Fighter, and I'm, oh, I really don't remember which one it was. I think it was X-Wing. But you could match the speed of your target with a single button press. And that was exceptionally useful. Unfortunately, nothing quite like this or that exists in this game. You kind of have to go about this manually. But I think we're doing a decent job. Alright, we keep our approach speed within acceptable limits. Keeps us within a, a good distance of our target. It's not like uh, the space jousting that happens. Ooh, we're gonna shoot by him again, aren't we? It's not like the space jousting that happens during the uh, some of those combat missions we've done in the past, where we essentially fly towards our target and our target's flying towards us. This is the chase. A chase. Okay, so let's double check the, the system map again. See if anything is interesting is happening. Nope. Let's see if we can't speed time up and Ooh, this is a lot diff more difficult. <laughs> this is a lot harder. In this case, we can't really get quite as close. But, we get to see Liang's rock go by. another look. You know, if I had to guess, 
he'd be heading out, this person would be heading out to Polson. Entirely sure. And since it is only a Natrix, we really don't have to worry about getting too close. Or we don't have to worry about him getting too far away, I should say. Because we've got enough engine power that we can catch up fairly easily. As I say that, he, he's really pulling away. NPCs react to my proximity. Like, do they try and avoid me as I get closer? Or do they just go about their business until I start shooting at them? You know, in old beats, I, I, this one episode I never got a video of, but in old beat once, I was uh, playing around in a minor cobra, and the minor cobra is a variant, a cobra variant that loses some speed and shield power for extra cargo space. And it also comes with a built-in mining laser, as opposed to a regular laser. Now the mining laser can be used for combat, but in general, it's pretty Poor. The firing rate is pretty low, and depending on your uh, target, it won't really do much besides make the shields flicker a bit. But I was in this minor cobra, this minor cobra, and I was doing a trade run. Uh, you know, your standard milk run, buying computers and uh, selling them at agricultural stations. And I got jumped by a, an asp pirate. And I was gonna fight it, I turned around and uh, brought up my weapon systems. Like, okay, well, it's an asp, I suppose we can take it out without much problem. And when I turned on the weapon systems, well, it was the uh, the mining weapon, the mining laser HUD that came up. Like, oops, I forgot. I didn't have the mine. I don't have a an actual weapon installed on this ship. So I turned back around, turned my my back towards the station, and uh, hit the boosters and tried to get away from them. But the ASP had boosters too, so he ended up following me. And since I had used a bunch of fuel in my hyperspace jump to get to the, to the system, you know, I was at a disadvantage in terms of fuel. The ASP was going to overtake me. And I started looking for options to, to get away from it. 
because I had spent the last of my money buying this uh, these computers. Let's take a look at the system app again real quick. I had spent the last of my money buying these computers and I didn't want to lose them to some pirate. So I was really, really looking at the uh, radar. I was really hyper-focused on the radar looking for convoys or big ships that I could perhaps kite the ASP around and uh, get the big ships uh, escorts or have the big ship come and uh, call some of the gal cop, the, the police ships in, in Elite and Elite games. Or the first elite, elite game, I should say. And get the asp off of me. And I eventually came across one. A convoy with a couple escorts. And as I approached, the escorts and the, the convoy ship, the cargo ship itself, started to, to maneuver to avoid me. So my presence there, you know, affected their movements. But I don't know if that happens here. And I don't think it's happening. You know, we've spent 20 minutes or so. No, oops, we loop by him. We've spent 20 minutes or so now chasing this guy, and there's not been a whole lot going on. Alright, we basically made it out of uh, Liang Rock space. So our, our frame of reference is the sun. Oops, wrong one. And we're just kind of spinning around. Fly by the sun. I think this may be going to Pulse and Call it. But I'm not sure. And you know what? I think it's time we put an end to this. So we'll get close. plasma bolts into his butt. Oh, he's fighting back. Look at that. Our shields are actually taking a few uh, Wow. We tanked all those all those uh all that fire, but really took a huge chunk out of our shield. I think we might need some more shield generators. I'm not sure. But that's fine. So, uh, well, today was probably not particularly interesting chased down a ship and he was turned around so he was definitely in combat ready so I don't know if he was actually going to Polson or not but at this point we'll never know and I have to ask what's the point of knowing if it only exists 
this NPC only exists to be destroyed. He could have just flown out of the system. Anyways, uh, that's enough for today. Next time, I think we will turn back time and spend the rest of the time waiting doing some trading. Because just sitting in the station for a month and a half is not really great. But anyways, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all later. And goodbye.